To everyone watching from coast to coast and around the world, listening on the radio as you drive to work, get up in the morning, your alarm just went off to hear the dulcet tones of my voice. Good morning, get up, get going. It's a great Tuesday morning. Whether you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, my YouTube channel, or any way that you'd like, it's good to have you with us this morning. The Steelers won last night, so that's a downer. I'm sorry, Steelers fans. It's not. I know you're happy, and we want you happy. We need you to vote. Pittsburgh has got to turn out for Trump. I know it's Trump country now. Uh, Biggest story of the day, I'll note it and then I'll move on, is that at the White House today, peace in the Middle East will take an enormous step forward. President Trump is going to preside over a ceremony in which Israel makes peace with the United Arab Emirates and Israel makes peace with the Kingdom of Bahrain. These are the two Arab countries which in the last month have agreed to establish diplomatic relations with Israel. Until today, there have only been two Arab countries in the world that had such relations. The number doubles today under President Trump to four. It's as important as the Camp David Accords. It's as important as the Jordanian Peace Agreement. It's very important. I was reading the Times of Israel this morning. Already, already, the biggest bank in the UAE and the biggest bank in Israel have established ties and a cooperation agreement. Uh, Israel's largest bank, which is Hapoelim, Announced on Monday, it had signed an agreement with the biggest bank in Dubai ahead of the official establishment of diplomatic ties. Israel and UAE signed a banking and finance memorandum of understanding earlier this month, paving the way for economic and business cooperation between the two countries. The two countries announced their normalization of relations on August 13th. It's getting finalized today. This is just enormously good news for the world, and it's good news for Donald Trump. And it is a great bit for the campaign. The other great bit for the campaign are, as reported in the Washington Post yesterday, and as evidenced by what the president has been up to in the last few days, other than visiting California for the wildfires, two new polls showed Biden and Trump running about even among Latino voters in Florida. Okay, even, Stephen, in Florida Latino voters. Well, you think, What's the big news about that? Hillary Clinton beat Trump by 27 points among Latino voters in Florida four years ago. And now Joe Biden is even with Donald Trump. I repeat, Hillary Clinton won Florida's Latino electorate by 27 points. And in two, not one, two recent polls in Florida, Biden, Trump dead even. That's why the president went to Nevada to campaign for Latino votes. It's why at the end of his visit to the wildfires, he held a Latino roundtable. It turns out that Latino Americans are falling to Donald Trump in record numbers, which, of course, ices the election for him. As the Washington Post put it, uh, quote, Democratic anxiety extends to Arizona uh, as well as Nevada. North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, all states where the Latino vote is important. Did you hear that? Pennsylvania. Now, why is the Latino vote turning to Donald Trump? Open the phones up. Any Latino is welcome to call me, 1-800-520-1234. I tend to believe it's because they own a lot of small businesses, and the PPP that Donald Trump signed into law that Marco Rubio and Susan Collins drafted and Mitch McConnell got through the Senate along with every Republican senator, has saved all those Latino-owned small businesses during the shutdown. I also believe that the Latino uh, minority vote is very different from the African-American minority vote and may, in fact, resent, to some extent, having no attention paid to them during the summer of Black Lives Matter and very deeply resents Antifa. Uh, if you if you grew up in California for 30 years, as my family did, until I moved back to the Beltway, you're very familiar with and comfortable with the uh, Mexican-American community and the Central American community that lives in uh, Southern California. And you realize, um, Los, uh, you know, East Los Angeles, very Latino, it's just a bunch of hardworking people. And that's why Donald Trump really is not a deport guy. He's a build the wall guy to control immigration, but he's not a deport guy. And he's a let the dreamers stay guy. And the Democrats have blocked that. And, and Latinos are not stupid. 
They know that they could have had the Dreamers legalized in year one, four years ago, and Nancy Pelosi blocked that. They know they could have had the Latinos legalized in year four, and Nancy Pelosi blocked that. They could get it done next week, but Nancy Pelosi blocks it. She'd prefer to have the issue than the resolution. Uh, The Santa Ana winds are picking up in California, which is not a good bit of news. We'll cover that throughout the morning. Hurricane Sally approaching the Gulf Coast, not good news. The president is on top of that. 